Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you something really, really cool. I'm going to show you how you can write and run Python through C Sharp and .NET. I know it sounds crazy, but you can do it with all the AI stuff. There might be many reasons why you might want to do it without having to move into a fully Python environment. So in this video, we're going to see all that. And ultimately, why do we do it? Because, because we can. And it's really cool. And I want to show you how to do it. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple project called python.net. It doesn't really have much. It has this hello Python here. Nothing fancy. And then I have a couple of files. I have this example.py file, which has a hello world. It just prints hello world. And then I have this calculator class. Now, this is Python. I can run Python. You know, I, I have the Python module installed. So if I want to run this to the console or, or with a Py command, this is all fine. I don't want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is I want to write Python in C Sharp. And this actually makes useful one of my most hated C Sharp keywords. You'll see which one in a second. And you probably guessed it already. So in order for this to work, you have to go to the packages and install python.net. This all works with this library. I know there has been Iron Python and Iron Ruby, which allows you to do something like this. You shouldn't use these. That's what you should be using instead. So. How do you write Python? First, you need two things. You need to point to the DLL, either via an environment variable pointing to the location or through the runtime dot Python DLL method like this. And then we need to initialize the engine. So we say Python engine and initialize. That's it. Now for threading reasons, which I think are being addressed in Python, but I'm not quite sure if they have, we're going to use the GIL over here. You don't need to know what it is, but your Python code will run in this scope over here. Now, how do we load, let's say, this method? Well, something I've done is actually I've marked this thing as content and copy always. So this thing will be copied to the compiled whatever we create in the end. And what I want to do is I want to say dynamic. Yes, I know. Example. That's the keyword I, I really didn't want to use, but I can say example. And then here I can say example dot hello world because that's exactly what the name of that function is here. So I can take that, paste it here. I can run my code. And as you can see, hello world. And by the way, this is fully debuggable. So if I click here and I say next and I move into things, I'm importing that example module, which exists because I have copied it in compilation on the compilation folder. And then I say, yeah, let's say next. We have the, the module over here, module from a specific location. You can use modules you've installed as well, like NumPy or FastAPI or whatever you want. And then you have your method, which of course we cannot step into because it's called dynamically, but it is called and is working. You can go further, right? You can go, let's say you want to get a calculator. So you're going to say dynamic calculator equals calculator, which is a class that exists in here. And I want to do maths. I can say calculator add one plus two. I'm going to say var. I can even say int. Does it return int or float? It returns float. So I could say float if you want to be strongly typed as well in this dynamic mess. Um, result equals, and then I can say console dot result. And if I run this, you're going to get exactly what you think. Three. So it, it does call Python and a decently fast way for really what it is. I'm wondering why does this want me to use var? Would var even work here? Huh? Because it's object. I guess. Interesting. The fact that this works blows my mind. You can do some crazy things. For example, you can use the famous Python library, which is not just a bunch of C bindings, uh, NumPy, which allows you to do insane stuff with maths in Python. So if I just run this, this will do pop, 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 tons of things with Python using the NumPy module straight in C Sharp. You can pass parameters to it. You can pass a new list of floats into the NumPy array method, and it will work. And you're going to get the type back. As you can see on the result, this is a float 64. This is an int 32. You can see the arrays. You can see it, it's just nuts that all of this works, and it works so well. And I'm so surprised that this package is still being maintained and it's so, so good. Now, I'm not the best in Python. I can read it, but I'm not the best in writing it. But I did get pretty good in TypeScript using our brand new TypeScript courses on Dome Train. So if you want to check those out or anything else on the platform, it's 30% off until the end of summer. Use code SUMMER30 at checkout. Just claim it and it's yours to keep. And you don't have to end here because there's actually 
more things you can do. We have this API. I don't know if you use this niche C Sharp feature called Minimal APIs. Fast API was one of the things that Microsoft looked at to sort of simplify how we make APIs in .NET. So, for example, this is a Minimal API in Python. It's called Fast API using the Fast API package. So, from Fast API, import Fast API, get it here, instantiate the app, and then use app get through an attribute. And then you can define your uh, read route, read item, and so on. So this can also be passed and, and worked and run in C Sharp. So you can run a full API, Python API, from C Sharp. Now, there's many ways to do this. I want to show you a very convoluted way to show you how far you can go, which I know is, is very interesting and weird that you can even have this API. But I'm going to create a scope over here. Maybe I can even use the using statement to, to dispose it. I'm going to import the API, which is this file over here. I'm going to get the app, this app, and then I can access things like running the app, hosting it, exposing it to a port, the log level I want to have. And then in case of an exception, I'm doing some C-sharp logging. So I'm mixing both over here. I mean, as you can see, our API is running, started server process, we have the number, we can click on this. In fact, I'm going to do it. And as you can see over here, 8000 hello world from python.net plus fast API. I can even go further. I can say hello Nick. And then you have the hello Nick from python.net. And this is not slow, by the way. If you go to Insomnia just to get some metrics, if I call this, yeah, it is not one millisecond, but it's eight. It is nine. It is fast for what it's doing, which is basically just running Python behind the scenes. And it's called Fast API. So inherently, it is not slow, especially if all you're doing is forwarding the Python through C Sharp. Of course, the NumPy stuff would be more complicated because of all the dynamic things you have to do. But still, the fact that you can do this is extremely powerful and you might have a use case for it. I find this so interesting. And if you do have a use case for this, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm really, really interested to know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.